So now, in this video, we're going to do a step-by-step -step build of an AND gate. If you buy a lot of uh, integrated circuits, a kit with a bunch of different integrated circuits, a uh, good chance if it's a 7400 series, high-speed CMOS series of integrated circuits. If it's a 08 there, it should be uh, four AND gates in that integrated uh, circuit. And um, you can check the data sheet for other details on that. A better uh, version would probably be the Schmidt trigger uh, version of the AND gate. This one is not the Schmidt trigger version. So if we get a middle ground uh, voltage, it can be indefinite what we'll have at the output right there. But um, what we should have is uh, if there's any low input, then the output's going to be low. So close to ground for this uh, particular setup right there. We need close enough to 5 volts with both inputs in order to get a high output right there. And again, if we get kind of middle ground region, um, it might get a little iffy. It's better with this particular integrated circuit to give it a, a solid uh, voltage um, change. So we'll uh, look at that later. But in any case, we have uh, four of those AND gates on there. AND just means all inputs have to be high in order for the output to be high. And we have the inputs of the ones that we are not using directly to the positive supply. We have to power the integrated circuit. So VCC is the positive supply and ground is the negative supply right there. So you can see uh, those two jumpers are powering them. These are the AND gates we are not using. Now we got a trim pod that we're gonna set for the signal and I'm just gonna move a jumper. We'll come to that in a little bit. We are gonna use LEDs to indicate when the output is high or low. So you can see if the output is connected to ground the best that it can, the blue LED will light up. It's got a 1000 ohm resistor because it's brighter than the red LED. And then a high output is as close to 5 volts as the output will get. And that will light the red LED. You can see that current path right there. If the red LED is lit, we know that the output is high. Order of resistors and LEDs uh, do not matter. So um, we uh, actually will be swapping those. So let's start with the uh, blue one right there. So that's coming from the positive supply headed to the output. So we put the long lead, the anode, you got to put it in the right way towards the uh, positive supply right there. Going to plug it directly to the positive supply. That jumper goes to the positive supply when the power supply is connected. And then we're going to take a 1000 ohm resistor because they're pretty bright. You don't need a lot of current. Put it to the cathode of the LED, the shorter lead, and then down to the output. That's third pin down for all of these. Always make sure you check the data sheet for the correct pin layout of any great integrated circuit you're using. Now, red one again, we're gonna connect it directly to a supply rail instead of the output. So the uh, line lead, the anode goes to the output as you can see there. Short lead, the cathode heads to the negative supply. So we're gonna swap positions, um, but uh, actually I'm gonna keep the line lead there. I'm gonna put it up a spot. I'm, I pushed this uh, jumper up a little bit when I made a, a test circuit right there. And um, so long lead the anode up a spot, short lead the cathode down below. 220 ohm resistor, we need a, a fair amount of current to get as bright as the blue LED at a lower amount of current. Of course, you want to stay below uh, 20 milliamps of current. Um, even below uh, 15 milliamps of current is probably good. This should be a little bit lower. But yeah, we're up there. One row above where that jumper is right there. That's where the anode of the red LED is, the longer lead. So if you put it in backwards, it just won't light up. Pretty straightforward. Now let's get to the output. So A up there um, doesn't really matter. Um, you don't have to follow the schematic if you want to swap them around. But on the schematic there, I got the A. I'm just going to use a jumper. It is simulating a toggle switch that could either switch to the positive supply or the negative supply. I have to manually move it. And um, you're going to see an indefinite output if it is floating, and this one is high enough. Um, so that's uh, something to be aware of right here. While it is in the switch process, it will uh, be picking up stray signals in the air. This integrated circuit is sense enough to pick that up. So we're going to go to the negative supply, actually. We're going to start with both of these low. You can see the trim pod is set to the negative supply for a low input. Um, but the uh, main thing is, this little area right there is gonna be what the jumper is right there. That's a trim pot. It's actually a potentiometer symbol. Trim pot is a smaller version of a potentiometer. So there's potentiometers that are meant for handling power 
they're a lot uh, bigger and um, I think they're a lot less common now than they used to be but in any case that's it for wiring it up uh, pretty straightforward and uh, we're gonna move the power supply over power is off right now and uh, so you should have it off until you're ready to uh, start everything and it's a good idea if you are able to to disconnect the power supply while you are wiring it up um, but if you can't uh, disconnect it because it's a permanent battery or something you can just uh, turn the uh, power off uh, with the switch or something so in any case there we got it turn the power on a low output blue LED is lit up so that's connected to the ground as good as it can um, probably not perfectly each one of these integrated circuits is a, a bit different in how well it uh, connects to ground so again things you can check with the data sheet and do your testing but we got that low input and uh, this one's the easiest to go from high to low of my two options so there we went high the output uh, stayed low and uh, we're gonna remove the jumper we do have a low input even though this is floating in the air uh, so the output would low but now we got high right there and it stays low so I'm gonna kind of go halfway and if we see both LEDs lit up there we go we know that there is not hysteresis uh, right there which is part of a Schmidt trigger so I didn't just forget to draw that on the schematic this is not a Schmidt trigger and gate Schmidt trigger and gate it would uh, make a instant switch from high to low and uh, I'd have to go low a bit to get it low and then high a bit before it would go high in the middle it could be either one here it's uh, keeping them both lit that's uh, how you can tell the difference between a Schmidt trigger and a non Schmidt trigger so now we're gonna go high again they both need to be high in order for the output to be high which we have there and now it's picking up stray signals in the air probably enough to change them completely it's probably not keeping them both glowing at the same time right there uh, we're probably getting a strong enough stray signal right there something to be aware of um, with these uh, integrated circuits their inputs don't let current in or out so they sense voltage changes even very weak ones uh, they sense them really strongly because uh, if they let current go through then that current would help change that voltage for very weak signals you would need a very strong signal um, if you think of a bipolar junction transistor it needs a you know somewhat fair amount of current you know not a lot um, so it's not as susceptible to stray signals as uh, MOSFETs and uh, integrated circuits are. So if you see uh, it's a high impedance or you hear of high impedance, that means the inputs are not letting current go through uh, pretty much at all. There's just a very, very small amount of leakage, uh, practically unnoticeable right there. They just look at the voltage and respond to them. So this should be pretty efficient. The, uh, as long as we have all the inputs tied together if I pop these out the outputs may kind of go erratic and you might see some extra current um, but otherwise all the current that uh, we're using is pretty much the LED right there so just be aware of that and um, plug that back in that's about two uh, milliamps of current approximately this isn't as accurate as a multimeter e either it's probably just a spec below two milliamps of current and if I put the jumper to the positive supply so we get a high output there you can see the red LED has quite a bit uh, more uh, current and this is not as much as it should have with a 5 volts 220 ohm uh, resistor right there so that lets me know that we're not getting the full 5 volts at the output which is to be expected um, if we remove the load if it doesn't have to pass any current then I'm thinking it probably will get to uh, 5 volts that uh, third pin down the output but when you got to draw current um, with most of these integrated circuits they uh, drift away from the rail voltage so if you need the full rail voltage you could switch a transistor instead and have the load here the LED be the load of the transistor this would just control the transistor and then um, you would get the full voltage across the load when the transistor turns on something to be aware of um, but in any case I made this long it was for uh, absolute beginners for the most part and uh, here's truth tables there's all kinds of logic gates and other circuitry that uses truth tables so you look at uh, what's at the inputs right there and then usually like here we got two inputs so it matters what's happening to both inputs to determine what the output is right there there's a lot of uh, truth tables for all kinds of circuitry out there um, shouldn't be too hard to understand that zero 
is uh, actually zero volts in this circle uh, circuit ground or the negative supply however you want to look at it there's all kinds of different terminology in uh, electronics for different circuits uh, be aware of that and then high is five volts right there um, it could also mean on and off and uh, all kinds of other things there I got the uh, voltages high low uh, open and uh, or no, I put clo oh, close to a zero volts, close to five volts there. But you could also have on and off and other things. There's all kinds of terminology. Um, the main thing is we have two states, and uh, it's one or the other, and uh, you give them a name depending on the circuit. So, in any case, that's about it. Hope you enjoyed. Oh, um, actually, yeah, we got one more thing. So, these outputs can sync and source about uh, 25 milliamps of current, according to the data sheet. This was made in Malaysia. Um, so I'll uh, kind of zoom in. This one has writing that's easier to see. And um, so I'll just kind of show with, with the loop if I get the light off to the side. There we go. Because I'm kind of blocking light. There, you can see it's reading. But yeah, it says Malaysia on there. So who knows, uh, you know, what factory this is made of. Uh, B uh, and then that one after there is some kind of uh, addition maybe uh, to this. Um, but uh, main thing is we got 74 HC. 08 right there a lot of times those letters mean improvement maybe the package that's in the plastic package or whatever you got to check the data sheet but again um you're probably not going to find uh who actually made this right there it's uh kind of a knockoff or whatever very common in electronics and um for learning electronics perfectly fine to use them they're a lot cheaper than if you buy a brand name from a reputable uh, source uh, right there so just be aware of that while you're learning these cheap uh, integrated circuits are just fine if you happen to find yourself in a situation where uh, you're selling stuff you may have to go with the more reputable uh, brand right there from a reputable seller in the US but uh, any case that's it thanks for watching make sure you check out one of the other videos I'm posting on the screen and check out the links down below they all help out a lot I'll see you in the next video